Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Black Lives Matter. First a hashtag, now a movement, is one of the most controversial social movements today. While some view the movement as benign and necessary, others find it objectionable and go so far as to call it a terrorist organization. Somewhere between the claims of black genocide and the claim that black people face absolutely no systemic issues lies the truth. We'll be exploring that truth today on Front and Center. Hello and welcome to Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Black Lives Matter. Now, BLM is an activist group that advocates for the rights of black people and specifically fights against police brutality. This is where the story actually begins. In 2012, an unarmed black teenager called Trayvon Martin is shot and killed by an older white guy called George Zimmerman. Now, obviously, any death, especially that of a kid as young as Trayvon, who was 17, is tragic. But why was this case so important? Because of media. The story took on a life of its own. In the tragic shooting of an unarmed teen in Florida. Police got here within a minute and found 17-year-old Trayvon Martin shot dead. Zimmerman has been cooperative and claims it was self-defense, even though Martin didn't have a weapon. This is a major moment in American history, and you became part of the problem by allowing Robert Zimmerman to come on your show and spread misinformation. Police won't say exactly what happened yet. Uh, is this the behavior of an innocent man who who's just been beaten up, or is this the behavior of a vigilante? Many people, especially in the black community, but in the community at large, were outraged and they were calling for justice. Many other people, mainly in conservative circles and conservative media, said that George was completely justified and did nothing wrong. Finally, in 2013, George Zimmerman is found not guilty. In response to this, people took to Twitter creating the hashtag Black Lives Matter. Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and Patrice Cullors founded the official Black Lives Matter network in 2014. And since then, it has spread globally. The Black Lives Matter movement has now been at the forefront for many years, calling out police brutality and violence against black people. Looking at Black Lives Matter, you wouldn't really understand why it's so controversial. It seems like a group that is looking to advance the rights of black people would seem pretty straightforward. So what's the big freaking deal? We'll be exploring the achievements, criticisms, and controversies of Black Lives Matter after this short break. I want to take a second and ask you to go to the unshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. Before the break, we talked very briefly, and I do mean very briefly, about the early history of Black Lives Matter. If you want to learn more about BLM's history, there are a ton of documentaries on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, we were talking about how BLM became so controversial. Well, in the early days people really didn't understand the movement at all. People were asking, do they think that only Black Lives Matter? Is this a group that's racist against all non, non-black people? I mean, just what the hell is this thing? And it's not exactly easy to pinpoint exactly what made BLM such a controversial subject, but I have found that BLM does not have effective communication, and that contributes largely to the constant negative press go fifi. And it is this lack of centralized communication that makes it possible for some really extreme individuals that identify with BLM to speak on behalf of the whole movement and contribute to a negative narrative. So to understand the narrative better, let's understand what Black Lives Matter is actually about. Black Lives Matter. Go do the spiel again. We don't just care about black people. You know, we're not going for black supremacy. I've heard that too. So this was actually a racial justice project for black people. It was a number of things. It was a hashtag, it was a platform. And now what we're seeing is that it's actually a network. It's the basic notion 
that black people are deserving of dignity, respect, and humanity. Everything we do should be about affirming the humanity of every single person on this planet. Peaceful, wonderful, powerful work, advocacy work, uh, be it with uh, fighting police brutality or local education or racial violence or economic disparities. We are here to make sure that our communities continue to be safe. We are here to make sure that our communities have the things that we need. And we are here to make sure that anti-black racism is eliminated once and for all. But because of the movement's poor ability to maintain centralized control of communication, we see stories like these dominating new cycles regarding BLM. When I saw a, a protest of Black Lives Matter and they were chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. Pigs in a blanket, fry like bacon. Pigs in a blanket, fry like bacon. Black Lives Matter group in New York City threw a Memorial Day party and barred anyone who was not black from attending. Boo hoo hoo. You white people are angry because you couldn't use your white privilege card whoa, whoa, to get invited to the Black Lives Matters all black Memorial Day celebration. Black Lives Matter has disrupted the pride parade for a second straight year. White folks crack me up all of a sudden when we want to have question. one it's day for value. black folks to focus on ourselves, but you've been having white day forever. War for the planet of the apes. Prominent Black Lives Matter activist DeRay McKiss, McKisson accused filmmakers of personally mocking him by dressing up an ape in a blue vest, which he's been known to wear. DeRay, you need to go back and watch the 1968 original and check out what the apes were wearing. This has nothing to do with you. I've talked about this in a previous podcast. Black Lives Matter was created to advance the interests of the black community, and I think they've done an okay job so far. However, the inability or unwillingness to call out hate being advanced on their behalf is actually very detrimental to their movement. For example, crashing gay pride. That is so backwards. The gay community faces enormous issues, and they kind of can be pretty hard to notice in big cities in the US or Australia, but it's very present elsewhere. And to go and interrupt their parade shows antipathy to another minority group that has similar issues. Also, this was, you know, you heard about this in the video, when that BLM activist said that Planet of the Apes was mocking him because of the blue jumper. It not only made him look like a self-important little brat and an idiot, it opened up BLM to mockery and cartoonification, painting the whole group as ignorant snowflakes who should not be taken seriously. This brings us to the centrist conclusion segment of the program. Black Lives Matter is not a hate group, nor does it advocate for black supremacy or violence against police officers. It is primarily a movement created to bring to light some of the injustices being faced by the black community today. I understand that the movement goes too far sometimes, equating, for example, black people and Jews during the Holocaust. The comparison is offensive, and the black community faces nowhere near the systematic oppression and targeting that Jews faced during World War II. But to claim that there is no issue being faced by the black community is also untrue. Between the documented instances of police brutality, long jail sentences for nonviolent crimes, job discrimination, and gang violence, there is still a long way towards total equality. Conservative media has been guilty of denying these issues and only giving some passive indication to the struggles of the black community. They have also frequently misconstrued the actions and motivations of a lot of activism groups, including Black Lives Matter. And that being said, the movement has done a poor job at controlling their message and has allowed hateful extremists to speak on their behalf. Oftentimes, when challenged about the peacefulness of their movement, citing rioting, destruction of private property, or calls to action for violence against uh, white people or cops, the leadership has played down the issues and failed to totally condemn them. Black Lives Matter has an important goal, and they should understand the, the importance of image and communication to achieve that goal. I believe they support, they deserve support, while still being held to a higher standard than they're being held to right now.
That's the end of Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to the Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, tweet at me at FRNT and Center or find me on Facebook. I'll read the most interesting comments on the air. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. There are always two sides to the story, so keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.